So I've only gotten back into reading during my spare time in the past two-ish years. I used to actually dislike reading and I think it was because of all of the assignments that you get in school. It really felt like a chore. And I was a slow reader so I would get distracted or bored and it felt very labor intensive rather than relaxing. But can I just give a quick praise for audiobooks right now, all right? Can I just give a quick amen? Most of the books that I'm going to discuss in this video I read via audiobook, which totally counts and is how I do about 90% of my reading. Just running errands, on my commute, makes it super easy and painless. Nowadays I'm reading books on personal development, professional development, and books on craft like writing and directing. All the books I'm going to mention are nonfiction, and I really enjoy nonfiction. It's most of what I read because I'm really into real stories and learning new things and having things that I can apply to my life immediately. Some people will ask, what do you read? And then I'll tell them some books that I've read lately, and then they'll say, but what do you read for fun? This is what I mean when I say I'm a nerd. It's not that I'm into an incredibly popular franchise, it's that I'm into being an intellectual, methodology, frameworks, analysis, the process of learning. Uh, so this is my fun leisure reading. <laughs> for me, striving to be the best version of myself uh, is what I enjoy. These seven books really have the power to shift your perspective and the way that you walk through the world, and they have lessons and observations that you can apply to your life in order to be the best version of yourself. Hey, it's your girl Asante, helping you move consciously and creatively through life. So let's go. Why We Sleep, Unlocking the Power of Dreams by Matthew Walker, PhD. This was basically a scare yourself straight book. A big takeaway for me was that unless you get at least seven hours of sleep every night, you will do worse at everything else in your life and you will die sooner. This book was a real wake up call. It went through the science of sleep, the science behind what caffeine does to your brain, the science behind NREM and REM sleep and why they're both important, sleep cycles, circadian rhythms. I listened to this one and it was narrated by a guy with a British accent who'd be going through all this neuroscience terminology that I would let wash over me as I fell asleep, like it was good to sleep to. It completely validated the concept of night owls. I felt very affirmed. And it had some great tips on sleep hygiene and how to get better sleep every night so definitely helpful would recommend and by the way links to all of these books will be in the description start with why how great leaders inspire everyone to action by simon sinek i guess this book could best be described as a marketing book but i think it's widely applicable because you're really selling yourself every day you're trying to get people to work with you you're trying to sell your ideas you're persuading you're trying to make agreements and build positive relationships and build trust so i wind up reading a lot of marketing books and business books because they cause me to immediately start applying those concepts to my day-to-day -day life. This book was really impactful for me and it emphasized the importance of having a belief system and a set of values and morals and being able to communicate those beliefs effectively. The gist was that people don't buy into what you do, they buy into why you do it. So the goal in business and in life isn't just to work with everyone who needs what you have, it's to work with people who believe what you believe. People tend to trust you more when they know what you stand for and even more so if they themselves stand for the same thing. I couldn't help but think about the 2016 US presidential election with this one and be like, mmm, <laughs> makes a lot of sense, uh, unfortunately. He made the point that, you know, Martin Luther King had the I have a dream speech, not the I have a plan speech, right? It takes a visionary who has big ideas and goals and values and communicates those uh, and then that big leader needs to have an action person, needs to have a planner, someone who's going to be effectively getting the thing done but the voices that inspire us to action have clearly stated beliefs and dreams and goals. I found myself nodding my head in agreement and realization so many times during this book and it gives you a new way to think about how you communicate about yourself, what you do, and most importantly, why you do it. On Directing Film by David Meme. This is the only book on this list that I read in physical form because uh, it's so short. Score! If you're interested in film or storytelling or visual narratives, then I would highly recommend this book. He really breaks down the role of the director, which is to figure out where to put the camera, figure out what to do with the actors, but mainly to establish the shot list. And his methodology is that stories should be told in a series of uninflected shots rather than by following the protagonist around. I like the format, it's based on a seminar that he's given, there's some conversational aspects to it, and it's a really quick read. The Mother of Black Hollywood by Jennifer Lewis. That is how she speaks, that's how she says the title, and it's 
amazing. <laughs> That's another reason why I love audiobooks, especially if they're read by the author and that person is a comedian or an actor or an entertainer or a public figure. You really get more of a sense like you're inside of their head, inside of their thoughts, and you get the emotion behind their words when it's coming straight from the source. And honey, she puts some emotion into this book. She is an actress. This might be my favorite memoir that I've read. Don't get me wrong, I loved Becoming. What happened was super interesting, but I was entertained with this. I was just smiling and laughing as I walked down the street listening like a total goofball. Like, I don't know what the people around me thought I was listening to, but I was so amused. And it was educational and informational to learn about someone's experience with navigating the entertainment industry. And it had some serious moments and discussed real issues. She talked about abuse, sexual assault, mental health. There were ups, there were downs, I felt all of the emotions, I learned things, I reflected. This was a super fun read and you have got to listen to this one. Made to Stick, Why Some Ideas Survive and Others Die by Chip and Dan Heath. This is a book about effective communication and how to make your ideas resonate. It's another one that could be classified as marketing or business, but again, we're always trying to communicate effectively with other people and have them actually remember what we said. There are six principles that they say make ideas sticky and they go into examples and details for each one and I found it to be quite enlightening. Also, I gained a new respect for Southwest Airlines. You know, I've been a fan of the cheap, but uh, they're doing it, they're doing it right, and I see why. This is one that I'm currently in the middle of, The Personal MBA, Master the Art of Business by Josh Kaufman. If you live in a capitalistic society, as we do here in the United States, then really no matter what industry you're in, it's smart to have a basic understanding of business concepts. And outside of super basic stuff like supply and demand, it is not something that I learned in school, especially not at my fancy liberal arts college. Huh, real world practical knowledge? It's beneath us. So far this book has been a really comprehensive breakdown of business concepts and is helpful just in knowing how the business world works. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People by Stephen Covey. I had been beating around the bush when it came to getting to reading this book. Honestly, I found the cheesy title to be kind of a turnoff. Also because it was so recommended, I was like, this must be overhyped. But actually no, it's really good. It's pretty deep and I had a lot of takeaways. And you have to keep in mind that this book was first published in 1989, before that title format was the heading for every self-help article ever. But the information is timeless. It's really revealing as far as human nature, how to focus your mental energy, and how to communicate with the emotional creatures that we humans are. This is definitely a book that I'll be coming back to listen to periodically just to keep myself in a good frame of mind. If you're interested in other ways you can work on being the best version of yourself, then you can check out my other videos on personal development right here. And if you like my videos and want to help me continue making them, then you can join me over on Patreon. As always, remember to live spiritedly and think creatively, and I will see you next time.